Okay, hey everybody, as promised, here we are in the lab, uh, ready to get underway working with uh, one of these Power Lab units. Uh, so before we get started, I want to just give you a quick tour of uh, the interface on the front of the Power Lab here. So we've got a whole bunch of different spots where you can plug different kinds of things in. Uh, so that includes some uh, output uh, BNC connectors here if you wanted to generate a signal output and trigger an event. I've got four uh, input uh, plugs here for four input channels. Uh, there's a stimulator as well if you want to generate an electrical stimulus. We'll get to that later in the semester. And then there's a bioamp, uh, which is for amplifying uh, very, very small electrical signals. But for right now, uh, we're just going to plug this uh, finger pulse transducer into one of these uh, inputs. And you'll notice there's some uh, directionality to this. So I'm just going to plug it in right up here. You want to make sure that's in there securely. Uh, hard to do with just one hand. Okay, and then uh, you can turn the power lab unit on. The on and off switch is a rocker switch on the back of the unit here. Okay, and if we've got that on correctly, the power and the status lights will come on, and the status light will show in green. Okay, so now we're going to get start getting real cozy with this software. We only have a limited number of uh, copies of this software package, so that's why I'm recording a screen like this. Um, but uh, once we've got our Power Lab on or ready to go, we're, we can fire up the software. And the program we're going to be working with is a software program called Lab Charts. So I'm just going to click that to start it up. And that's going to open a Welcome Center window. Sometimes it might open some other windows. You can just close out of those. And we're just going to start a new recording. So you can either use the little recording icon here, or up under the file menu, you can just click New. And that will bring up a chart view window that looks like so. So this actually has a number of different channels currently displayed. So we've got channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 corresponding to those four recording channels. And right now, we're just working with channel number 1. And we want to really be able to see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag down those other channels so we can just focus on what's happening in channel one. Okay, so now I need to actually take my finger pulse transducer and put it on. And I'm left-handed, so I'm going to stick it on my right hand. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it does need to be kind of snug, so it's just there on my finger. And then I'm just going to put my hand down on my lap for the moment uh, uh, as we get underway. So now I'm ready to start doing a recording. So I'm just going to go down to the lower right here, and I'm going to click the Start button. and Lo and behold, you can see that I do actually have a pulse. So uh, that's all well and good, but sometimes on um, this y-axis, you know, we're only actually using a little bit of the recording space. We might want to actually be able to see what's going on more closely. So we can actually do that with an option here. There's a little caret for a drop-down menu. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to click the auto scale. Uh, button. So now that's readjusted my y-axis scale. Um, so now we're actually using the majority of the plot space that's available here. For this particular recording, we're just recording a voltage output from the pulse transducer. Later on, we're going to start looking at uh, different measurement units. Um, there's a bunch of other things we can do with chart. Uh, so for example, um, let's say I want to do an experiment and I actually want to stand up. Uh, I'm going to type that up here in the add comment section. And then as soon as I click Add, um, that's going to be added at the time point uh, in my recording. So I'm going to click Add, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and stand up. Okay, so now I'm doing some uh, pulse recordings while I'm standing up. And then let's say I decide, okay, now I want to sit down again. I'm just going to add the same comment again, and I'll sit back down again. Okay, so I can uh, add some uh, informative notes. Uh, to different parts of the recording. You can see here, if I'm not sitting very still, uh, the recording kind of goes all over the place. OK, so let's say I've got what I want. I can just press Stop. Um, if I need to start again, I can then also just click Start uh, and start a fresh section of that recording uh, until I have what I want. And there's a couple other things you can do. You can just scan back through your recording. 
Uh, but another thing I find useful is down here there's a little mountain and a big mountain. The little mountain will let you zoom out so you can see more of the recording. Uh, big mountain will do the opposite and sometimes you might also discover you want to auto scale again uh, to be able to see your full recording. Okay so I'm going to zoom back in a little bit and you know, the next thing you need to do is then start uh, analyzing your data. So how do we do that? So let's go back to this section where I stood up. Um, I want you to notice not all of these amplitudes are identical to each other. There's a little bit of variation here. So it wouldn't be appropriate for me to just take one of these peaks and kind of use that as my measurement. Instead I want to select a set of peaks to be reflective of uh, my measurements uh, under that condition. So you know, somewhere between about 5 and 10 peaks uh, should be sufficient. So I just drag to select this region and then to actually make those measurements what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a data pad and this what this data pad view shows uh, right now is kind of the default default set is uh, to uh, record the mean voltage for channels 1, 2 and then millivolts for channels 3 and 4. Um, but let's think about this for a minute. Oop. Uh, does the mean really mean anything for the data that I just collected? I hope you will agree that it doesn't. So we need to get a little more sophisticated with our analysis technique. And we can do that, what, I, what I'm going to do here is just again click on this uh, column header. That's going to pull up a data pad column setup menu that's going to give us a whole bunch of different options for things that we can calculate uh, uh, in this column. Uh, so in this case these pulse measurements are actually a type of cyclic measurement. So I'm going to select cyclic measurements here. And rather than just measuring the mean, a uh, thing we're really interested in is the average cyclic height. So from min to max. So I'm going to select that and you'll notice there's a little description down here. Average difference between maxima and minima in the selected cycles. Uh, I do want to calculate from channel 1 and I want to just show you one other window um, which is uh, this options window down here. Uh, what this is going to show me is how lab chart is identifying where the peaks are uh, in the data that I'm working with. So in this case right now um, the red is my recording, uh, black is lab charts interpretation and where you see these open circles that indicates a place where chart has identified a peak and actually if you look at this right now uh, chart's done a pretty good job with these data they're fairly clean uh, so it's highlighting everything that is a peak but if you ran into circumstances where that wasn't the case uh, then you might want to be looking at something like this uh, detection adjustment window so right now it's doing that based on uh, looking for anything that is greater than or less than two standard deviations from kind of the mean uh, in this recording. So for example if it wasn't detecting enough peaks we could lower that. Okay now it's finding a whole bunch of peaks. If it was detecting too many peaks we could raise that but in this case two is just about right. So go back to two. Okay so if I click OK then what lab chart is now displaying here is the average cyclic height uh, in this first column. Um, I might be interested in more things. So for example, okay that gives me amplitude, but what about uh, you know my pulse rate or my pulse frequency? So I'm going to go to channel t the second uh, column, uh, column B, and I still want to analyze from channel 1, right? I didn't record anything in channel 2. I'm going to go to cyclic measurements and I'm going to select average cyclic rate. So that's going to give me rate beats per minute of the selected cycles. Uh, same uh, options should apply. So if I click OK, so at this point my heart rate uh, after I stood up was at 90.6 beats per minute. So this is, uh, line 1 is a preview of this. If you want to actually add that to the data pad view you should click the plus symbol up here to add that value. Uh, now let's say I go back over to my chart recording and I want to compare that to my pulse 
amplitude and heart rate after I sat back down again, I can select a new data region. You'll see those values pop up up here. Uh, and it looks like my amplitude is a little lower, my heart rate was a little bit lower, uh, so I might want to record those data as well. Uh, you know, I could even go back and look you know, before all that. Uh, what was I up to before I stood up? So I had a higher heart rate at that point uh, and an intermediate amplitude at that point. Okay, um, with the data pad, you cannot really enter anything in uh, on the data pad. Uh, you can actually also have a column that will add the text of a comment, um, you know, read the specifics here. Uh, and, you know, enter that in on Datapad. But usually I find it most helpful to uh, copy these measurements uh, into a separate spreadsheet. Uh, so then when you get ready to wrap up, um, I generally don't wind up saving the Datapad. Uh, you might if you so choose. Uh, but I do save my recordings uh, in case I need to go back at a later point and maybe reanalyze something or look at something again uh, later on. So you're just going to save. And I've created a folder here on the desktop called Animal Physiology. Um, you know, come up with the research group name, make yourself uh, your own folder, uh, and uh, give your recording an informative label. Uh, and uh, you can keep things there. Uh, for now, I'll just cancel. Uh, and then you're, uh, when you're ready to wrap up, you can just quit out of this software. We're not going to save this time. And then make sure you shut off the Power Lab unit. Unplug your uh, transducer, and then you are good to go. Okay, so I hope you found that to be an informative introduction to working with the Power Lab and with Lab Chart. As mentioned, we're going to be doing a lot more with the Power Lab uh, and with Lab Chart as the semester progresses, but uh, this is a good kind of introduction to working with the software. You can't really break it that easily, so uh, you should kind of spend some time exploring, kind of poking around, figuring out how it works. And know that I do expect that everyone individually will know how to operate uh, the Power Lab unit and the software. So uh, you should all spend a little bit of time in the driver's seat uh, during this first lab, starting to get familiar with the software. All right, hope you're looking forward to it.